Welcome everyone to another episode of Rooftop Perspectives. As you can see, it's a little dark out here. I worked on the show for today for so long that distribution, the editing, I wanted to make sure everything was just right because I want to go in deep on the topic tonight of demons. By the time you see this, you may have already saw it. But anyway, there was a couple of things I wanted to speak about and I'm going to speak about them right now. Many people have asked me advice on how to transition into another country. Now, this is not my specialty. This is nothing that I specialize in doing. I just did it. But I wouldn't say just do it. My mindset is a little different than most. And I don't have 10 reasons and 10 ways to transition. You have to be able to let go, right? Um, you have to be emotionally prepared because while you may visit a country and see the sights and say, wow, I can live here. Well, maybe after a month or so, you might feel different. So you have to be prepared for that. But that's not exactly what I want to speak about. I want to speak about one aspect of that type of thing, meaning that when you are living where you are, right? And that particular place is your whole world. You have to know how to deal with it when pressures come, when feeling low comes, when feeling bored comes, when feeling that there's not enough offered to you as far as opportunities. Well, for the time that you're there, because not everybody can up and leave, and usually what you have to think about is that when you leave, nine times out of ten for most people, they shot their load and they won't be able to come back. So can you handle that? When I left New York City in 2001, early 2001, and I sold my home, what I got for my home, if I waited another, even at that time when things were going up, if I waited another eight months, I would have got double the money. But if I was to come back and want to buy that same home and just move back, I didn't have enough. But don't make a decision to leave so fast when things may not feel too good because it doesn't mean that it isn't good, right? Put my pen here, you can't see it. <laughs> the main thing, to not do a reactionary move and just leave because things don't feel as good is to study other places, uh, research other places. But while you're doing that, don't think that that's gonna be the cure-all for whatever you may be going through to want to leave. Let it be a smooth transition. Think about the benefits. But here's the thing. Before you think about all of that stuff, assess your present situation and understand that there are other realities out there that could be better for you, but you have to face where you are emotionally. Right? Emotions can blur reality. Emotions can make something that's not so severe make, make it seem severe and this is what you want to get away from you have to think methodical you have to think logical and when you are in an emotional state of mind you can't think that way that if those emotions weren't there you'd be able to dissect the different factors in your life in a more reasonable and realistic manner but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be aware of the other realities out there and do your research before you make the leap. That's the bottom line. And in doing so, it will empower you. Almost like the wife that's secretly uh, planning her divorce from her abusive husband. Just the mere act of going through with those plans brings her a little bit of stress relief because she's moving toward a new reality that that divorce will bring right well if you're on a job and you need that job well why not look for other jobs without having to be desperate about it as if you were fired so instead of blowing up on the supervisor that will most likely bring you into the office and, and terminate your employment secretly and quietly look around and ask around that will give you the silent victory over that supervisor you see what I mean it's, it's, it's all mental. With me, it's all mental. When situations come at you out of nowhere like a tsunami and emotions are flying from another individual who you 
have to deal with. It could be a family member, it could be a spouse, it could be a child. It's a learning experience because their outbursts of emotions tell you where they stand with you. They can't help it. They let you know if you're in something together in this union or proximity, or if they'll let you know also if their mentality is a your thing and a my thing and, and, and we're not together. They may not say that, but this is yours and this is mine. This is yours and this is mine. You might be thinking our, but they're not thinking our. They're thinking mine and this is yours. But you can't get emotional to blur the facts of reality. What has happened has happened. You can't change it. No matter how emotional you get, no matter how loud you try to express yourself in an ignorant way. That's the way it is. So whenever you're going through anything in your reality and you want to move somewhere else, you want to advance somewhere else, take time and plan. I'll plan things years in advance. And when it's executed, people say, oh, you're brilliant. Well, maybe not as much as you think I am. But you know one thing I know that I am and that I did? I'm a planner and I planned. And once I planned, I executed. That's the thing. You can plan all you want. But if you're not ready to pull that trigger, and I don't mean pull a trigger on the gun. I mean take action and execute the plan. You can plan all you want in the world and it means nothing. We plan businesses down to the T how much we're probably going to make and what we need to do and even acknowledging the hard work that we have to put in. But if we don't put that plan and put force and movement behind that plan, it's not going to go anywhere. We can plan an online entity. We can plan an online business. We can plan a YouTube channel. But if all you're doing is talking about it, and never every day doing what you have to do to advance it and to learn, whether it's a YouTube channel or an online business, it will not work. No matter how good you are, you've got to put in the work. You've got to put in the work. But seeing your reality that may not be too comfortable at the moment, do not make it let you make a decision that later on you say, you know what? I should have waited. But in order to feel like you're escaping, plan, research, research other countries, research other states. There are people living all over the world right now, no matter what. And you see, when we're stuck in social media like we are, many of us, or just headline news and Fox News and CNN, you know, there are people out here who sit home every single day. And if they're not on the computer looking at foolishness that's not going to advance them, they're watching the engineered news platforms that mold their thinking, right? And the TV shows and the talking heads that mold their thinking. And you wonder why they're in a state of depression. No, you don't have to wonder why. This is what they're doing. This is what they're feeding into their mind. They're not doing anything that will benefit them in the thought process or what they're putting in their head. So they go where the wind blows. You see? It's like a sailboat boat that's sitting out there, you know, with nobody to, to turn the sail, to get it to a direction. The wind blows this way, it blows that way. And that's how many of us are living our lives in a reactionary way. It's very easy to be proactive, but it seems to be hard. And if one aspect of your planning and your research seems to be a little difficult, what do you do? You break it down into smaller, bite-sized pieces that you can handle mentally. That's the only way to go. But many of us look at the whole thing and we get overwhelmed and we start thinking to the negative side. Oh man, I don't have enough money to do this. Oh man, well then take more time. But most of us are not in control of our mind this way. And with these days coming up where decisions are going to be forced on us because of the ever-changing world, we, we have no, no choice but to change and alter the thought processes that we have, how we go about things. 
If you get emotional over the little things, when bombs start dropping and, and foreclosure notices come to you and eviction notices come to you and a growling stomach with no food in sight and you realize you should have planned, but it's going to be too late. The emotionalism gets you nowhere. What I use emotionalism for is to fuel executing a well thought out plan. It's just energy for me. I let the passion flow after I know precisely what it is that I'm going to do. That's how you use your emotions because you can't get rid of your emotions. No matter how many of us try to say that we're not emotional and we, 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 we don't believe in love and feelings. and You're lying to yourself. You probably came up in an emotionally constipated situation from young. And that may be a sign of weakness for you because... You ruled that out because you didn't receive that. Many of us haven't, and it's tragic. Many of us have learned to get around that because many of the things that we do now is because of a reaction to our childhood and our childhood experiences. Mine were quite pleasant. I had uncomfortable situations outside the home in the growing process, dealing with people who were fake to you or insincere or talk behind your back. But that's part of the learning process. The bottom line is that no matter where you find yourself in this life, with whatever you want to do, with whatever you plan, you have to plan it out in a meticulous, precise manner. And be realistic about it. Don't think you're going to still have that same level of enthusiasm once the plan is put forth. Lowball it. Always plan out in a way that you can continue it. So it becomes habit. Right? With me, it's effortless now to make content because there's so much ingrained in me in my daily movement. There's, there's nothing hard about it. You know, it's to the point where naysayers have tried to tell me, no, you need to make the people miss you. You need to do this once a week. Oh, you're not in America no more. You need to stop it now and slow it down and live your best life. How the hell is a bum going to tell me how to live my best life? But see, when you're easily influenced, people sometimes, when they have their little hang-ups, they think you are easily influenced. I don't care what a person tells me. If I know I have to go this way and I prove it to myself and I know it's going to work, I'm going to do it. I'm not easily influenced and I'm highly motivated. I've always been this way. I was trained to be this way. This is in my DNA. Every fiber of my being is motivation and I'm not going to apologize for that and I got to this point from the discipline always been disciplined unless I chose not to be disciplined amongst the company of a beautiful young lady that was a different thing but what are you going to do and accomplish for 2023 don't you know that we're in the fourth month I mean say the rest of the month expired January February March, April, one third of the year gone. Some of us have accomplished things. Some of us have put ourselves in position to accomplish things because you can't throw every perfect punch standing from one place. You're going to have to execute excellent footwork and timing, timing to get you in that position to land the blow that wins the fight or well, the combination of blows that win the fight. You have to always be thinking because things change. The factors that are there in your life now may change and certain things may not be there anymore and other things may open up. Life can be short if you don't make moves to make things happen and opportunities pass you by or life can be a long feeling never-ending volley of opportunities and change for the good and networking. This is why I can't allow anyone to keep me in a place of stagnation. You can have nice people around you, but they can be stagnant. I'm not saying they all are. But you can't ride behind them, meaning that if you are on a highway with three lanes and they're in the slow lane and they're driving at 20 miles an hour and you know that you need to be at least 70 miles an hour and you're not driving reckless 
But listen, I need to get in this lane. I'll see you when you get there. I can't slow myself down for you. Can't do it. And you usually get the people to say negative things towards you because they can't keep up. But this is not a race. It's not a race for me. It's a flow. And if my flow is a little different from your flow, please don't be angry with me. And if yours is a little more swift than mine, I applaud you because you're showing me the way to increase and that it can be done. That's all it is. But for where you stand now, what are your plans? What are your goals? Where do you see yourself a year from now? Where do you see yourself five and 10 years from now? Then break it down into small parts and move toward it. Because hearsay, gossip, slothfulness, only thing that's going to get you there is smart work. Hard work, not because you want to make it hard, but smart work that is challenging. Like Floyd Mayweather says, hard work and dedication. But most of us, the dedication flies right out the window when we start to execute the plan and realize that it's not going to be as easy as we thought. What, what kind of person are you? I'm not putting you down. You know what you have on the inside. So I'm asking you, what kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that's going to walk around blinded, oblivious to what needs to be done and look around and it's going to be April of 2024, April of 2025? Look around, it's 2030. What body of work are you creating? Whatever endeavor it may be, motivate. We have to. I'm too busy motivating to indulge into in the negative thoughts and, and, and the little spats. And, you know, see, sometimes people will create antagonistic environments, hostile work environments, hostile home environments, because they see you focus. And they don't like that because it's showing them up on what they're not doing. See, when you're on a job, you don't have to run off to the supervisor and tell what another co-worker is not doing. The best way to do that is for you to maximize what you're executing on that job. So they say, oh, wow, Lance is producing so much. Hey, this person's not producing anything at all. I don't have to say anything about anybody. And you don't either. Execute your plan and shine. That's the only thing you have to do and everything will fall into place. I mentioned different concepts. I was here and there all over the place, but that's how I do it. That's the mood I'm in today. I'm getting ready to do this show. I'm going to do a couple short uh, 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 videos, not shorts with shorts, but a couple shorts uh, on video and on the audio. And we're going to do our show. And then we're going to do a conference line conversation. Then I'll fall asleep, wake up again, and repeat the process. That's how you do it. Anyway, just want to say salute to my brothers. Mwah. Much love to my sisters. Every day is an adventure. Every day there's another opportunity to open up, opening up, and I embrace it all. And I'm right. It's like those birds that don't have to flap anymore. They keep their wings out, and the wind just takes them higher and higher because they pump those wings to get up there where the winds are blowing. So right now I'm on cruise control even though I'm producing a lot because I created a habit or, or a volley of habits that now push, push me higher and take me to the next level. And it's a wonderful, sweet feeling. Anyway, much love to you all. Take care. So long. Lance Skirv out. On to the next one. And join our Patreon. We get the hardcore stuff there every single day. Patreon.com forward slash Lance Skirv. Everything is landscape, including the app that you need to download. Anyway, peace out. Got so much to do and so much to accomplish. Much love. Where you been and where you hiding? I know you're lying. Don't you try it, no. You really shouldn't play with fire Put it out with water But now you're drowning There's been a whole lot of trying Whole lot of crying Whole lot of telling me I should be dying or be like you But I don't wanna be like you There's been a whole lot of trying Whole lot of crying Whole lot of telling me I should be dying or be like you But I don't wanna be like you Cause I could do, I could do better I could do, I could do better I could do, I could do better
Telling me that I'm too lazy You are the one that is going crazy Yeah Cause you can't even hold your own But you always know what's wrong With everyone else How is that? You gonna have to call your friends Tell them that you're gonna be late Cause I'm gonna need you to explain There's been a whole lot of trying, whole lot of crying, whole lot of telling me I should be dying or be like you, but I don't wanna be like you. There's been a whole lot of trying. 